You're probably here because you want to become a freelance web developer or you're already a freelance web developer who's looking for more contracts for more clients. So I'm going to give you exactly that. And we're going to discuss if it's a good idea to sell WordPress as a freelance web developer. And actually, I started as a freelance web developer 12 years ago, right? And I've also worked with over 200 agencies, many of which have done WordPress or used to do WordPress. And I'll tell you about that a little bit later. Like, why did some do WordPress and then switch away from WordPress? And why are some still doing WordPress? There's a specific distinction between the two. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Before we start, hit that subscribe button so you get more updates on how to get contracts as a freelance web developer and how to get started as a developer in general. So the first thing we need to pay attention to when starting as a freelance web developer and making a choice whether we want to do WordPress or not is are there enough leads? Is the market big enough? Are we going to be able to scale to a size where it's worth doing it and you're going to have economies of scale and you could have multiple people working for you potentially as well who are working full time and have lots of work so you can make lots of profit, right? So for this, you need lots of clients. Now with WordPress, and especially if you look at freelancing platforms like Upwork, there's a huge amount of contracts and this is a little bit deceptive. So it's one of the largest niches on most freelancing platforms like Upwork and Fiverr. However, the competition is also equally huge. So here's the problem with WordPress. The problem with WordPress is anyone can do WordPress. You barely even have to be a developer to do WordPress. Ask taxi drivers, some of them know WordPress. Funny thing, I ask them sometimes and they're like, yeah, sure, I used to do that. So the thing with WordPress is the barrier of entry is fairly low. This is a benefit and a disadvantage at the same time. It's a benefit because you can get into it with very little experience very quickly. But the disadvantage is anyone can, and as such, the prices tend to be lower. It's lower at the bottom end of the competition ladder. So if you're competing with beginners, prices tend to be very low. When you get to the top 10% of the providers, then you can actually charge good money. So there are providers, there are service providers that charge serious money for WordPress websites, $10,000 and above. But that's like the top of the top. To get there, you have to have access to the right types of clients, lots of proof, uh, specialization in a specific industry and so on. You're not going to start off like that. And it's going to be very tough going to get there. There's lots of competition. WordPress is a big pool and it's a red sea. It's a red ocean, as they say in market research books. This brings me to the second point. And by the way, don't get the idea that I'm necessarily against WordPress. I'm just saying I'm against WordPress if you're in the bottom 90%. If you can get to the top 10% in skill and proof, and pricing, fantastic. Anything below that is not worth it with WordPress, right? So the second point is market saturation. What's the deal with market saturation? Like, are there that many providers? Is it really true that the competition is huge? Well, clients are flooded with proposals. Clients are flooded with options in terms of WordPress. There is pre-made templates that clients already know how to install themselves. There are agencies doing stuff for hundreds of dollars per page, and it looks amazing, right? And it's really not worth it offering free, uh, freelancing or agency services, in my opinion, unless one of the two of the following criteria met. One, you can offer it very, very expensive, $3,000 and above for custom WordPress websites, or you can offer it on a massive scale where it's only $500 or so for a, a small website, but you can do like 10 of them per day and it's highly automated, right? So if you can't achieve one of these two things, it's not worth it doing WordPress. In terms of market saturation, there are quite a few agencies that you could just Google and find almost immediately that offer services within those two categories. And they do an amazing job. They have amazing automation. They have amazing teams. They figured it out. They specialize in industries. It's very, very tough to compete with them. And people know, like, this is fairly general knowledge at this point that this is possible in WordPress. So if you don't want to do that, if you don't want to compete at that level, if you don't have the resources and ability and time to do that, perhaps look at some other industries as well, because this, there are industries similar to WordPress developments that have much less competition. And it's not 90, 10, it's not 90% and 10%. It's more like 60% and 40% because it's a, the demand is higher than supply. Now we'll talk about that in a few minutes when we talk about alternatives. Before that, let's talk about outsourcing. Now, WordPress is one of the easiest things to outsource ever because you can get pretty good developers and pretty good designers at absolute bottom tier pricing. You can hire people for $4 an hour for crying out loud and they can create amazing work if you give them the correct instructions. Their English is not gonna be perfect. There's gonna be other problems, but they're good enough 
to deliver a WordPress website. That's the benefit of WordPress. It is so freaking easy to outsource. If you could charge even a thousand dollars for a website, which is very, very, very cheap, by the way, even then you can make a profit, right? As long as the contract is right and the agreement is right and the scope of the work has been very carefully defined. So you don't overwork for free, essentially. In that situation, even at a thousand dollars, you can make a good profit of 40, 50, 60% or even more sometimes. So even though that's possible, I don't recommend selling anything at $1,000. I recommend selling maybe one or two projects at $1,000 just to test out the market a little bit. I would never keep selling th stuff at $1,000 unless it's on a massive scale where you have 12 projects going on per day. So what about the competition in WordPress web development? Here's the interesting part. When I said that there's 10% really good agencies and uh, freelancers and 90% they're competing for the bottom tier leads, the 90%, they're not actually very good. They're just like average or below average. They don't really have good contracts, good agreements, good project management, good teams. And they're not really good at telling the client what the client is actually gonna get. So they tend to overwork and under deliver at the same time. So despite that, there's still a lot of them and you're gonna be compared to them if you're not careful. So if you're just saying, I sell WordPress websites, you're gonna be compared to everyone else who sells WordPress websites. As such, a lot of people that I know who actually do sell expensive WordPress websites, they don't market it as WordPress websites. They market it as things like authority pages and other solutions for very specific industries where they specialize in providing a solution for the industry and not in the technical platform that they provide it on, right? So they didn't even mention WordPress because it's not about WordPress. It's about the solution. WordPress is just a platform. It's just a way to deliver the solution. What would be some ways to get leads for WordPress web development? In the description, I'm going to link to videos that go into incredible detail on how to use these funnels. But let's first talk about several funnels. Funnel number one, cold email. Old as a rock. Still works though. I used to do it in in the 2000s, it still worked. You can still do cold email. You can even still cold call. You can still reach out to people on LinkedIn, on Facebook. You can do all that stuff. But the easiest things to do are to go on freelancing platforms. It's just the leads are ready to go. They said they want to buy. You go on there, you create an account, you start sending proposals. It's definitely good for beginners and intermediates. For advanced people, they'll need a larger funnel. But for beginners, it's good enough. All these funnels work but definitely check out the description to get my detailed information and detailed tutorials on how to use freelancing platforms and how to get started, especially as a web developer. In terms of pricing, you'll find a wide variety in WordPress web development. You actually start off with almost zero and it goes all the way up to a hundred thousand dollars and above. So if, when you go to, for the several hundred dollar types of freelance developers that charge several hundred dollars for you know a one page website, you'll find that most of them are very average, below average, they mess up the code, it's a disaster. Some of them deliver amazing work, like when I make a website for myself, I don't do it myself anymore, even though I could, I just pay someone $450 and the work is perfection, right? It's, it's just amazing. They have a whole factory environment where they produce perfect content and a, a quality designs and development rather not content. And it's all done to my specifications. It's custom designed for $450. So as such, I do prefer to just give it to someone like that. However, at the top end where you could pay tens of thousands or even a hundred K for a WordPress website, you're dealing with very specific industry experts in very specific niches. Like I only do uh, authority websites for this type of influencer of some kind. And we go and take professional pictures. We do videos and all, all that stuff. Honestly, they offer a more of a full sized service, not just WordPress, but still the main thing that they do is a WordPress development is just not being sold as such. It's being sold as almost like a marketing package as a, as a, as a web presence package of some kind, depending on the industry and depending on the exact needs of the industry. And then you can really amp up the pricing to a lot. So what are some alternatives? I actually made a video on uh, the market research on what type of things you can offer if you do uh, develop, if you offer web development services and more specifically e-commerce web development services. There's also a link in the description, but basically the alternatives are e-commerce platforms similar to WordPress, but not WordPress. And if you want to stay on WordPress, you can actually do WooCommerce, which is an e-commerce plugin that plugs into WordPress and transforms it into a highly scalable, well, fairly scalable e-commerce platform. So it turns WordPress, which is pretty much a blogging website type of thing 
it, well, it can do anything, but you know what I mean. Mostly it's used for blogging and stuff like that. But you can turn it into a full-scale e-commerce solution with loads of plugins, loads of solutions. However, it is, in my opinion, not the number one. Like, it's being used by millions of, millions of websites. But in my opinion, things like Shopify are superior. There's a video in the description about this as well. It goes into detail and breaks down based on market research. Just check it out. It's better than what I just described. So now let's talk about lead generation for web development companies. So for this, I have a whole playlist, like it's a whole topic. Just go in the description. There is, I explain the algorithm of how Upwork works, for example. I also explain the different steps you need to take, how to send a proposal, how to do the sales call. Everything is explained in the playlist that I linked in the description on lead generation for web development companies. So go and check it out and I'll see you in the next video in the description. If you have any questions, do comment below. I usually respond to the best comments myself.